Now that we're still on the subject of drama, it's time to talk about the Greeks, who pretty much originated drama in the Western world as we know it. Uh, Greek civilization flourished in the 5th and 4th centuries BC when they made major contributions to civilization that are still with us today. Architecture, history, the idea of history, in fact, and, um, poetry, and um, most of all, maybe drama. Um, well, of course, philosophy is important, but we're, we're considering something that is really accessible to almost everybody, and that is the idea of tragedy. Tragedy is a human perception of life that uh, is, is rather deep, and, and it was the Greeks who originated this um, with their three great uh, playwrights, Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. Uh, we're going to deal with Sophocles and Oedipus the King, but first I, I want to just mention something about the theory of drama, and that comes out of Aristotle's Poetics. Aristotle wrote now in the latter half of the 4th century BC, he wrote many books, but the book, uh, or the essay that seems to have survived beyond all the others, is one called um, Poetics. In this he discusses what, are the ele what the elements of tragedy are. Now the main element of the tragic, um, of the tragic mode is the tragic hero. The tragic hero is an interesting um, perception of human personality that, that we don't always see in the movies. We don't see in popular um, drama today that particular feature. Why? Because the tragic hero is someone who fails in the end. Someone who unfortunately falls and falls by reason of his own decisions by reason of his own failure to see things clearly and to see himself clearly. And Aristotle pointed out the character of Oedipus, who was the king of Thebes, or the, what they called the tyrant in those days, uh, who was somebody who was very great. He was uh, someone in an elevated position who, because of his decisions and because of his lack of self-knowledge, actually fell from grace in, in a most deplorable way. And this is what we're going to be reading today, or to, over the weeks, rather. You can start today, I hope. Uh, and uh, understand that it's not going to have a happy ending. Somehow, uh, American audiences want the happy ending, yeah, but uh, that's not always realistic. And so uh, we want to understand something more deeply about the human condition, not only about the greatness of the human condition, but about its limitations. And this is what Aristotle points out to us occurs in the perception of the tragic hero. The tragic hero, he says, is somebody who is great, somebody who is in an elevated position, like a king, and who is a good, basically a good person, but who has uh, certain flaws and who makes certain errors along the way. His chief flaw is um, defined by the Greek word hubris, H-U-B-R-I-S. And this means tragic pride. It means over-assessing um, over one's ability to deal with everything. And uh, during these days of the coronavirus, uh, we do get the feeling that we, uh, we really can't deal with everything. So it's almost a, a tragic um, thread that is running through our culture at the moment. But let's get back to uh, Oedipus the king and Aristotle. Aristotle goes on to say that uh, tragedy should have uh, certain elements in it. And these elements are um, basically a plot. We have to have a storyline. We have to have something happen, and it should be done rather neatly. After that, in importance, comes the character. The character is somebody who defines himself by what he does, not by what he says, by what he actually does. And Aristotle wants the characters in a play to have a certain consistency, a believability. You can see such a person in a, con in a, in a, in a consistent way as a real human being. That's something that somehow is lost track of, I think, in, in a lot of productions, especially in, in the, in the um, series of... Uh, of really interesting dramas that are on TV these days. Somehow, after the, after the third series, characters begin to change, and uh, we lose our thread. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, this doesn't happen in every one, but in a lot of them I've noticed they do happen. Why? Because they're persisting in putting on another, another series here for another, for another season. But uh, it's important to understand the, the character as a, 
as a human being that's possibly understood as a, as a real person. After that, uh, Aristotle says, comes the theme. There has to be a, a, an, a, an importance to, to what the action is in order to somehow uh, convey the idea of the tragic situation of the human condition. After that, other things are important. Uh, should be nice dialogue. Uh, we should have, he wants to have uh, something in the way of music and, and, and uh, dance, I guess. And this occurs in the, um, this occurs in the uh, chorus, the chorus section of uh, 50 Men, who uh, impersonated various, uh, various elements of society and sometimes of the animal world as well. Uh, they, um, they sang and they danced. Um, in a routine that we that is lost to us today, we don't understand that. But uh, believe it or not, those um, the composers in the Renaissance who studied um, the idea of the Greek tragedy uh, decided they were going to do the same thing. And this is where opera began around the fifteen nineties, uh, when the composers said, "You know, we want to put on plays with music and dance." And uh, the, the great form of opera came out of that in a very artificial way. Anyway, get, to get back to the Greeks, uh, we want to understand that uh, something should happen in the course of our viewing a tragedy, and Aristotle defines this as a release of tragic emotions. These tragic emotions he defines as pity and fear. As the tragic hero falls, we experience these emotions and are relieved of them. This is called catharsis. I'm going to put that uh, in our little uh, notes uh, on Black Book uh, so you can take a look at the, how, how that's spelled. But a, a release of pity and fear, where does that come from? Well, the idea that you pity the person for falling and at the very same time you recognize that there are larger forces in life that can happen to anybody. And so there's that element of fear as well. Once that is released from you in the audience, you the the spectator, you can go about your life um, in a more uh, reasonable way, understanding that you, know, you don't have to be too anxious about things or too uh, too fretful. Uh, you can't uh, you can't live right if if that's what's bothering you. Too much anxiety is not healthy for the soul or the body. And so. This, um, th this uh, tragedy, um, this form of tragedy, performs a, uh, a serious purpose uh, for us who uh, engage in this, uh, engage in, in, in uh, appreciating it. So we have to understand that, and um, we want to also understand that, uh, you know, the word tragedy is kind of used in a very sloppy way these days. Strictly speaking, tragedy occurs because the hero causes his own uh, fall. Sometimes it's demise. In the case of Oedipus, it's not his death. It's something else, as you'll see. Tragedies occur, you know, in a general way when somebody gets into an accident, but we don't identify with that in the same way that we see somebody causing his own ruin. There's a completely different, then we might say, spiritual motif there. Uh, the, the final question we want to ask ourselves, and that often comes up with Oedipus, is does he cause his own tragedy, or is he a victim of fate? Has the god Apollo determined that his destiny should be what, it, you know, what you're going to find out uh, has been? Is he someone who is not in control of his life? Well, the answer is yes and no, and I think I'm going to ask you to write on that, all right? Okay, we'll have another uh, little talk uh, in a short while. Okay, for now, bye-bye.